Welcome back everybody, my name is Christian Hyatt, I'm a Managing Director here at Risk360 and I help oversee our ISO 27001 practice. Uh, and this is our ISO 27001 Explain series where we help cover every control and control objective in ISO 27001 to help you implement the program and hopefully achieve certification. Today we're covering off on Control Objective 12.2, Protection from Malware. Now in this control objective there is only one control, and that's controls against malware. However, there is a whole lot to think about uh, when you're thinking about malware protection for your organization. And the reason is because there's a lot of techniques, a lot of nuances, and different types of environments to consider when you're thinking about malware in general. So one way that I like to think about this control is to break it down by environment. When you're thinking about malware, one environment that you might think about is your endpoint device. Uh, so laptops, desktops, things like that. And uh, you, know, you might have uh, something like uh, a common antivirus tool set or some type of an uh, advanced antivirus malware protection installed on those devices. That's where most, what most people think of when they think of uh, malware or antivirus. But the other place that you might want to think about it is um, on your infrastructure. So I want to talk about each of those and some of the techniques that if you're considering implementing a program or if you're auditing a program, uh, you can consider too. It's also important to note that this control talks about protection against malware. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have antivirus installed as the only control. It doesn't mean that having something like antivirus installed is, the, is enough either. So let's think about some of the ways. Uh, and, and I want to point out here uh, on the standard, so on the left-hand side of my screen, I have the ISO 27001 framework up, and on the right-hand side of my screen, I actually have the implementation guidance. So as you can see, while there's only one control in 27001, there's several pages, or two full pages of options when it comes to implementation guidance that literally go from A to I, and then with, with additional information here. So some of the things that ISO points out that you should consider is, for example, um, on your endpoint device, on your infrastructure, having uh, malware uh, tool sets installed, but also things like vulnerability scans, also things like application whitelisting or application blacklisting, uh, different kind of monitoring controls so you can see if uh, different software or malware is installed. Um, you could also have things like uh, uh, regular reviews or approved software lists, that's the, the whitelisting and blacklisting element. Um, also thinking about email scans. So if you have emails that scanning for malware, ransomware is huge right now. So can you detect a malicious um, piece of software from email? So lots to consider uh, when it comes to uh, the, the malware environment. Something else I want to point out um, is on the infrastructure side, especially in the modern technology stack, it might not make sense to have something like antivirus or malware installed. Uh, especially if you're doing something like uh, source code or infrastructure as code in like a DevSecOps environment or in a DevOps, uh, DevOps uh, environment. So a couple things that resources that I'd love to point you guys to is additional reading outside of this video is one, uh, SANS has a great course on DevSecOps that I, that I recommend that I've heard great things about. Uh, take that course. I think that if you're thinking about how to automate um, um, and integrate security into your modern cloud stack infrastructure, especially infrastructure as code. That's a, a great class to take. Um, they have also a great uh, white paper available that kind of walks through the whole continuous integration, continuous development environment in a DevSecOps perspective with, and they actually list out different tools and methods that you can consider to integrate security into that and prevent malware ultimately. And uh, my favorite white paper, of course, is uh, authored by our team here at Risk 360 that does the same thing. It covers an end-to-end -end DevOps lifecycle and where you can integrate security um, in an automated basis into that lifecycle to help prevent malware. And we also list a bunch of tools that you could consider both open source and uh, paid for tools uh, that, that are very popular in the marketplace that might help you consider some of this. So those are some of the considerations. Uh, as we mentioned, consider your endpoint devices, consider email scanning, consider infrastructure, and all of the different potential techniques to prevent malware uh, 
and, and you have this control covered. You can see why there's a lot to unpack, although it's only one control. So I hope you found this video helpful uh, as we continue our journey through uh, Control Objective 12 on operation security. You know, continue watching. We're going to break up these videos separately because there's a lot to talk about, even though some of them only have one control. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, Christian Hyatt. Thanks.